morning and welcome to this glorious service of ordination. And while we would not be here were it not for these courageous 12 and those who support, supported them through this journey, the service would not be complete without all of you, and we are so glad that you are here. Should you be new to our tradition, the Episcopal Church, please know that everything you need to participate fully in this service is found either printed in the bulletin you were given or in the blue hymnals near your pews. Either any way that you can join with us wholeheartedly in this time of prayer and support and openness to the grace of God, your presence will make this ordination a reality. And for that, we give thanks to God. Continuing with the opening acclamation, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated as the candidates for ordination shall now be presented. Have they been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe their manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that they have satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe them to be qualified for this award. Thank you. Speaking now to the twelve. Will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so. As you're able, I invite you to stand. Thank you. Dear friends in Christ, to all of you now, dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting these persons for ordination to the sacred order of deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Sandra, Enid, Joan, Anne, Elizabeth, Martha, Susan, Janice, Leslie, Catherine, Stephen and Eugene B. 
be ordained deacons. Will you uphold them in this ministry? We'll wait as each one signs the oath to the order of ministry. As we move now to the Litany of Ordinations, this is a beautiful, sung, and lengthy prayer. If you would like to remain standing as a posture of prayer, you are welcome to do so. If you would be more comfortable seated, please feel free to be seated as we pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Lord, For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of your 
church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, we For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Marianne, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth, and may thirst after righteousness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, we For Sandra, Enid, Joan, and Elizabeth, Martha, Susan, Janice, Leslie, Catherine, Stephen, and Eugene, chosen deacons in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord that they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name, we pray to you, O Lord. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. We pray to you, O Lord. For their families and the members of their households, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord be For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord be for those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord be for a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, be our For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, be our For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, be our for all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with this, all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Three 
rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, Paul, Philander, and all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, we give you heartfelt thanks for the pioneering spirit of your servant, Philander Chase, and for his zeal in opening new frontiers for the ministry of your church. Give us grace to minister in Christ's name in every place, led by bold witness to the gospel of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Therefore, since, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Christ according to Luke. A dispute arose among the disciples as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm honored, humbled to speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, since it is by God's mercy we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. St. Paul goes on to say in the very next sentence, but we have this treasure in clay jars, so it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. I speak to you, my friends in Christ, soon to be deacons, and all those gathered to celebrate this day as one clay pot to another. In, uh, in another very interpretive translation of this text, Eugene Peterson describes us this way. We are messengers. We are errand runners for Jesus. It started when God said, light up the darkness and our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ. He goes on, if you only look at us, you might miss the brightness. We carry this pre precious message around, hear this, in the unadorned pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that. It's amazing, isn't it? Audacious, really, to trust that the unadorned pots of our daily lives can carry the message of God's light and love to the world. Not that there's anything wrong with being an unadorned clay pot. The Irish writer John O'Donohue describes us with a bit more poetry, as the Irish tend to do, with a reminder of our relative place in the universe. He says this, humans are new here. Above us, the galaxies dance out toward infinity. Under our feet is ancient Earth we are beautifully molded from this clay. 
Human presence is a creative and turbulent sacrament, a visible sign of invisible grace. The human journey is a continuous act of transfiguration. Well, we gather today for the ordination of these 12 marvelously unadorned clay pots. In doing so, we testify that their lives are inspiring examples to us of the creative, turbulent journey of human transfiguration. We see in each one of you, even when you struggle to see it in yourselves, the light of God shining in your hearts. It's the same light, the same light that shined fully and completely in Jesus on the mountain of his transfiguration. You remember the story. He climbs a mountain with three of his disciples. There he was filled with a light that shone so brightly, it seemed to those who witnessed it, it seemed to change his appearance. I don't think it did change him. In my imagination, the light illuminating him came not from the outside, transforming Jesus into something he wasn't, but from within, a reflection of his inner being. And that light, that same light, shines in your hearts, in all of our hearts. It seems to change you, change all of us, and in some ways it does, I suppose. We feel it in us, we feel it passing through us, and the experience changes us. Yet, what is illumined in us, and in particular, to the 12 to be ordained, what is illumined is your true self, the person you were uniquely created by God to be and equipped now to be a vessel of God's love through the extraordinary ordinariness of your lives. As uh, Robert Phillips said to you yesterday, you in your you-ness are called by God to this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes, for taking the first step, and then the second, and then the third, and all the steps that followed, and thank you for all the steps that are to come. Thank you for courage, for your tenacity, your faithfulness. Thank you for your patience, your generosity of spirit, your forgiveness. For those of us building this formation process as you were going through it. And on behalf of the soon-to-be deacons and all who will benefit from their leadership, I offer our profound thanks to the congregation gathered and beyond, to families and friends, peers, teachers, faith communities. Thank you on behalf of the diocese you have brought together today. The dream of a deacon in every church seemed impossible to imagine just a few years ago. But it's a lot easier to imagine now because of you 12 joining the five ordained last year with the ones following you and the deacons who by the grace of God have joined us. It could happen, it could happen in large measure because of you. It takes someone to go first, you know, and you did. And I wonder if all of you might join me in giving particular thanks to a few people. I'm going to name them all. Archdeacon, Archdeacon Sue von Rottenkrantz, Canon Paula Clark, the Reverend Robert Phillips, the faculty of the Deacon School, and the Commission on Ministry for shepherding the Deacon's formation process. Would you please? Now, one of the privileges of my life is to receive, get this, four letters a year from everyone in the ordination process. And let me tell you, these aren't postcards. These are epistles offering me a glimpse into the creative, turbulent sacrament of this sacred and very human journey of transfiguration. And these letters describe over time 
the growing confidence of call, what it feels like on the inside to hear and respond to a call from God, from your life, sometimes your rector, who literally called on the telephone to say, I see a deacon in you. And your acceptance, embrace, growing confidence in call gives you, among other things, it gives you a finely tuned intuition, honed by experience, to help the rest of us discern our call, the unique ways that God's light shines in and through us, illuminating our essence, inviting us in ways large and small to make our offering to the world. Call begins, paraphrasing Longfellow, not with the vows that we make, but the vows that have been made for us, a bond unknown that was given to us, that we should be, he said, else sinning greatly, dedicated spirits, dedicated spirits. Your confidence in call helps us all reject one of the most powerful, demeaning, and at times strangely appealing lies of this fallen world. That it's possible, desirable, and for far too many inevitable to live, in Walter Brueggemann's words, an uncalled life. One not referred to any purpose beyond oneself or beyond the forces of oppression and distraction that conspire to keep us small and in our place. In contrast, a called life is a life in process, a life at risk, always on the edge of the frontiers of our courage and our sight. And it's, while risky, it's also a, a safe life in relationship to the one who calls, not out of anger or disappointment or judgment, but in love. Now let me be clear, every Christian, every Christian through our baptize, baptism has been ordained into the order of clay pots. We're all called to this, this call to live the extraordinary ordin ordinariness through which the light of Christ shines through us. But you, beloved 12 now, are called to a particularly delightful, peculiar subset of clay pots known as deacons. You have the wondrous and specific responsibility now to encourage the rest of us to listen for and take seriously our own callings, whatever they may be. And in particular, you are to help us go beyond the borders of our comfort and security, wherever they lie, to serve Christ in our neighbors. Your mandate is to help the church discern God's light shining God's light shining in Howard Thurman's haunting phrase, in those who stand at our moment in history with their backs against the wall. This is, as Thurman's life was a powerful testimony at the, la at the beginning of the last century and now in ours. This is a matter of real urgency for us as Christians. What does the mission and the teachings of Jesus have to offer to those who live every day, every day, with their backs against the wall. And this isn't a call to charity offered in the safety of our benevolence. This is a call to solidarity and repentance and renewal. And as deacons, along with your role in worship and the life of Christian community and those infamous other duties as assigned, we discussed yesterday, you're the bridge. You're the bridge between the church, however we defined it, and what lies beyond, exhorting us all to love as we have been loved and to serve as Jesus served. That's it. So in closing, I'd like to give you two words, two words, 
one of gentle encouragement and one of extravagant encouragement. Gentle exhortation, the other of extravagant encouragement. Okay? The first, the exhortation, is to take up for yourself, if you haven't already, specifically, the rule of life that the presiding bishop Michael Curry has set before the Episcopal Church, the way of love. It's not a new rule, it's a restatement of an ancient one, a gathering up of essential practices for a Jesus-focused life. Since July, I have done so, and while it's far too early to, to point to any real fruits of this practice, let me tell you that my inner experience has been quietly transformative. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the way of love, you can find ample materials on the Dawson website or that of the Episcopal Church, but deacons, I'm saying to you, take them, live them for yourself. Don't speak to others about them until they are the bedrock of your own experience. And as the more of us live with greater intention in this way of love, the world will change. So that's the exhortation. Now here's the extravagant encouragement. Years ago, I heard, a, I heard an interview with a woman named Carol Pearson, who was an author at the time of books on heroism. And she really caught my attention. This was very early in my ordained life when I was trying to figure out how to wear all this stuff and to be a deacon and then a priest in the church. And the interviewer asked Pearson which of all the heroes she had studied, and she was a student of heroism, which hero did she like the best? And her rather surprising answer was Sissy Hankshaw, a contemporary protagonist in a novel that Tom Robbins wrote a long time ago called Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. Now, Sissy was a remarkable young woman who was born with oversized thumbs. And as a child, she was subject to all the awkwardness and prejudice that a physical deformity entails. And when she was a teenager, her parents arranged for her to have plastic surgery on her thumbs. And she looked forward to that. But one day in her adolescence, she looked into the mirror and realized that she was quite lovely. And she knew that if she had the surgery, she could have the normal life that everyone wanted her to have. And that she, in herself, that she wanted too. But in that moment, her thumbs started twitching as if to invite her to live life on a deeper level if she dared. So, instead of cutting off her thumbs, Sissy went on to become the greatest hitchhiker that ever lived. <laughs> and in one scene, Sissy's psychologist describes to a colleague Sissy's uncanny ability to hail cars from the other side of a four-lane highway. And the other psychologist comments on Sissy's obvious success in transcending her affliction. And Sissy's psychologist replies, oh no, she hasn't transcended her affliction. That would suggest that there was something wrong with her that needed to be transcended. She transformed her life by affirming her thumbs. Living by God's light shining in you is something like Sissy's affirmation of her thumbs. It's the freedom that comes when you honor who you are to see in you your body, your mind, your circumstance, even your weaknesses, the stuff out of which meaning and fulfillment emerge, the one's call to shine with the light and glory of God. You, you are called to this, thumbs and all. And all we pray today is that you continue to embrace this call, enjoy it, enjoy your lives. We are all blessed. The world is blessed because you have said yes. Thank you. In the name of God. Amen.
invite all those who wish to affirm the Christian faith to join in the recitation of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the congregation to be seated as the ordinance come forward. My brothers and sisters, Every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servanthood directly under your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As a deacon in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among, to those among whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacrament, and you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My brothers, my sisters, do you believe, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of a deacon? I want to say that again. <laughs> I'll set it up. My brothers and sisters, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of a deacon. I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of holy scriptures? Will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? I will. Will you do your best, your best, to pattern your life and that of your family in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. 
will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of the Lord Christ. Amen. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. All those in the congregation who wish are invited to stand as we sing. God, most merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. Praise you that you have highly exalted him and made him Lord of all, and that through him we know that whoever would be great must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries in your church, and for calling this your servant to the order of deacon. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Sandra. Fill her with grace and power, and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant, to observe the discipline of Christ, to let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments, that through her many may come to know and love you, as your servant came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen.
Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Enid. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know and love you as your son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Joan. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant, to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you as your son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, gracious Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Anne. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Fill, make her, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve, may this deacon share in Christ's service. Come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Therefore, gracious Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Elizabeth. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve. Make this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Martha. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the disciplines of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve, make this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever.
Therefore, gracious Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Susan. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her, many, many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve, may this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Therefore, gracious Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, give your Holy Spirit to Janice. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant, to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you as your son, son came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, give your Holy Spirit to Leslie. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your Son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, give your Holy Spirit to Catherine. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve, may this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your son, Give your Holy Spirit to Stephen. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Make him a Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let his life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through him many may come to know and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit 
to Eugene. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Make him, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let his life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through him many may come to know you and to love you. As your son came not to be served but to serve, may this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to be vested according to the sacred order of deacons. My friends, fellow colleagues, brothers and sisters in ministry, receive these Bibles as a sign of the authority invested in you to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of Holy Communion. Now I invite you to stand. And I uh, ask you to turn face the congregation. I present to you, my friends, 12 newly ordained deacons in the Episcopal Church. to take your seats. Deacons, this is your first obedient request. Please come to the altar. See how they obey me. I'd like to commend the congregation for your faithfulness and prayers and your patience. 
Ordaining 12 people takes a while, but we don't want to shortchange any one of them, and we want to give them all, please be seated, all the love and prayerful affirmation, and you are doing that, so thank you. We move now to the table of Holy Communion, which is um, an essential sacrament for us as Christians of this particular branch of the church. We gather around the table of Jesus, we remember his last supper with his closest friends, and then we share symbolic meals with one another, and so experience, we believe, his palpable presence with us. And all are invited to participate fully as you feel moved. Simply come forward or back wherever an usher directs you after the prayers have been said to come forward, receive bread. There is gluten-free available for those who need it and to take a sip of wine or to dip your wafer in the chalice. Um, it is also customary in Christian worship uh, at this point to take an offering of money. It's a symbolic gesture on our part to remind ourselves whenever we gather in prayer that we owe everything to our God and we give in part what we have received. Today's offering, should you choose to give, will be divided among the 12 as they start their discretionary funds funds for the express purpose of serving the immediate and felt needs of their communities. And so in advance of all those who will benefit from those gifts, we thank you for your generosity. Uh, just a few other things. After this symbolic meal, there'll be another party outside in the, in the yard in the back. And believe me, you've deserved it after sitting and standing and praying. You, um, you are worthy of refreshment and, and um, and the, the pleasure of one another's company. That's when we can take all the pictures you want, here or there, so we, there's no rush at that. Um, I wonder if you might join in thanking, join me in thanking the cathedral staff for the meticulous care they give us whenever we gather, and um, extraordinarily so today. Would you join me, please, in thanking the cathedral? You know, it doesn't matter what service it is. It doesn't matter if it's noonday prayer, even song, Sunday morning, a gathering of the diocese, or the funeral of John McCain. We are all treated with the same extraordinary love and respect and commitment to excellence. And I, for one, cannot be more proud and grateful for the ministry of Washington National Cathedral. Um, while I did take the liberty of thanking um, a whole bunch of people for the ordination process to, um, for the deacons, um, it was a unanim by unanimous acclaim we felt it was important to lift up again uh, one particular minister. I know she just loves this when we do this to her, but I'd like to ask Sue to come forward while Ken and Clark presents her with a lovely bouquet of flowers on our behalf because we love you, Sue, and we would not be here without you. Let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a gift to God. Thank you again.
hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of, his bo- of the body of Christ and his, the blood of, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Peter, and Paul, our patrons, Philander, Chase, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, Give us 
this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. gifts of God for the people of God.
Say. 
together. Mm. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray this, Sandra, Enid, Joan, Anne, Elizabeth, Martha, Susan, Janice, Leslie, Catherine, Stephen, and Eugene may be to us effective examples in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. And that we, with them, forth from this place in peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.